1969. Mom brings home Abbey Road. Take it away. She plays the whole record through, and the end of side one, of course, is I Want You, She's So Heavy. Not a song I'm particularly thrilled about even now, but I hear this fantastic sound. Paul's everywhere on that song, and I don't know what the sound is. So being the eight-year-old pain in the ass that I am, I said, <laughs> you know, Mom, what's the sound? And she said, it's a bass. I knew it that moment that this is what I wanted to do. Okay, so you gravitate towards the bass. You hear I... I, I was listening to, uh, I listened to it again the other day, that song by Marmalade, Reflections of My Life. Right. Fantastic bass part. And I realized that's the stuff that I was always drawn to. I mean, it still goes back to Paul, always, right. always, always. But that's the stuff I was always drawn to. You know, you hear that, you know, and you, you hear a lot of that in my music. And it's just, that's where, where it always was. Any, any fool can play guitar, <laughs> but nobody dances to a guitar solo. <laughs> so... It's, it's, all, it's all about this. This is what holds everything together, and I realized that very early on. I guess it's part of my personality. I was a goalie when I played football. I was, you know, a goalie also in hockey. So I guess it's that sort of support thing. I don't believe in bass solos. I don't do any of that stuff. I don't slap. There's a million guys that could slap. Have a ball. Have a ball. It sounds great. But you know what? While you're up there riffing, I'm going... Somebody's got to hold you up while you're doing that. You've seen my band. We've got four soloists. <laughs> it's what we do. It's the real, it, you know, it's, it's even, I get, I get, like I said, it's just part of the personality, maybe. Yeah. It's not a lead instrument, which is why I like it. Okay. Now, you, I noticed in all your recordings, you are an amalgamation of your influences. Talk about your, your yen for Dee Murray and John Deacon and Sir Paul and how you incorporate that in your songs. The, 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 the John Deacon thing is, is, and actually also Paul, right. a lot of this stuff. I mean, they both did a lot of that. Dee Murray could sit there behind the song in the pocket, as you call it, or all of a sudden, like, uh, what was the one you put up the other day? That Tony was playing. Uh, 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 Alice. Girls, all the young girls love Alice. He's. That's that whole song. The guitar sounds great. Elton's voice, the lyrics are great. But that song, you take, you change the bass line. That song is completely different. And I guess it's all those three guys. Uh, are they the best play, be, players technically out there? Probably not. Are they the best song bass players out there? Yeah, pretty much. Because it's still all about the song. You know, John Entwistle did what he did, and he's a great bass player and all that, and Les Claypool and Geddy Lee and all those guys. And, but at the end of the day, if you're just going to sit, if you're going to play a song, I would take any of those three guys any day of the week. Right. That, that, and that's where I come to it from. You know, I told you, uh, Hunky Chateau was almost worn through in my house as a kid. But even you listen to the other guys that we spoke about, you listen to the guys on the, uh, who is it? I just saw it doing a 50th anniversary, America is doing a 50th anniversary tour. Did you ever listen to the bass line in Tin Man? That's, a That's some serious bass playing. But, you, but when you think of serious, great bass players, that doesn't always come up. Well, that's what we're trying to change here, Glenn. Tell me about Hot Hell and High Water Band. You've been toiling with those guys for many years. What is your role in that band? Uh, it's 23 years this week, actually. Okay. <laughs> First, Hell or High Water is, if I wasn't in them, I'd go see them. They're, okay. they're a really good band. Uh, my role in Hell or High Water, uh, aside from this, I, I am the taskmaster at rehearsal. Okay. I, I, it's like, nope, stop, do it again, do it again, do it again, you know, because when you're the rhythm, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. You guys can play around with your sevenths and minors and chords and all that. I'll catch up to you later. <laughs> but uh, my first gig with Hell or High Water, Hadn't been on stage in five years. Mm -hmm. Come in, we, the two nights before, we, we practiced 75 songs mm -hmm. in the studio. We get up there, I'm a little nervous. I still get a little nervous. First song we play, the lead singer turns to me and says, we're doing such and such. Not on the list and not one of the 75 that we practiced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank God it was a Beatles song. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's Paul, I've got this, you know. But the, the, my, my, my job is, to work with Richard, who's, oh God, he's the best drummer I've ever played with. I've been doing this since 1989, live anyway. Wow. He's the best drummer I've ever played with. He's so solid, he's so steady. And I think between the two of us, I'm 6'6", six, six. I think Richard's 5'4", 
I think between the two of us, we're like two average sized people. I'm not sure. <laughs> but he, he's, he's, a, he's a great guy to play with because he can hold it together while I'm holding it together. And if every so often I feel like, you know, doing one of those things, he's still there. And if he feels like going off, I'm holding it up. And like I said, there's an incredible harmonica player called Charlie Wolf. Tom Whiff is a brilliant lead guitar player. Charlie Manduni also plays lead. James Quigley plays keyboard solos all over the place. He's terrific. Somebody's got to keep it, you know. <laughs> so I guess it's, that we're back to that support role thing, which is okay. Uh, talk about the role of the bar band. I mean, you guys are like the unsung heroes of rock and roll. You're the guys in the trenches doing it night after night. <sighs> You know what? The songs that people want to hear. See that that that's that's the the the, the essence of it right there. Yeah. You want to hear this? You know, there's a there's a page on Facebook called Cover Band Central, mm -hmm. and every third or fourth day, some jagass puts up a thing. Oh, if I have to play Mustang Sally one more time, and I always respond the same way. It's like, well, what the hell do you think we're there for? You know, if they want to hear, sort of Mustang Sally, or they want to hear. Freebird, we actually learned Freebird from idiots yelling it out at us. <laughs> so we, learn, we do it very badly, but we do it. You know, it's, that's why we're there. And it's a lot of fun. You know, I'm 57 years old. I get paid to play music that I like, because this is all this stuff I listened to growing up. I drink for free, and people come up and tell us how wonderful we are. There's the fucking downside of that. <laughs> I, I haven't found one yet. But that's, that's the thing. It's like you want to go out, you want to hear it live, and you know, put a quarter in the jukebox, whatever it is, great. But to see a band doing it, and somebody told, we were playing someplace in Queens one night, and some guy came, we were outside after a set, and the guy came up to us and said, you know, you guys play these songs very differently than most bands. You play them like you wrote them, like they're yours. Said, well, they are ours, you know, for, for three hours a night. They belong to us. What, what's more fun than this? And doing it this way, you know what? I listen to, uh, you know, Beatles stuff, whatever. If we're playing Beatles songs, it's like I've been listening to this since I was nine years old and now I'm still playing it at 57. Well, how cool is that? You can catch additional episodes and much more by visiting us on the web at knowyourbassplayer.com. Thank you for joining us today and we will see you next time here on Know Your Bass Player. Mm -hmm.